Today we're going to be looking at a painting called The Ambassadors by Hans Holbein. This was painted in 1533 and you can currently find it in the National Gallery in London. It was painted with oil paint on wooden boards and it's pretty large. The people you see here are painted pretty close to life size. This particular artwork is loaded with symbolism and we're going to unpack this in a few steps. First we're going to look at it just to take an inventory of what's actually in the painting. Then we're going to look at these things again to try to see if they give us any clues. After that we're going to put those clues together to see if we can find out why this painting was made and what the meaning of it is. Because in the long run what makes an artwork good is how well it achieves its purpose of communicating. Let's look first at the two people. The first person who we notice is the man on the left, and boy is he an impressive looking figure. He's wearing this immense fur coat. His two sleeves appear to be made out of silk, and he seems to be wearing some kind of medallion around his neck. To the right is a second man, dressed all in black. He seems to be a quieter person though. He is clutching a pair of gloves in his hand. He's wearing a black hat, and around his neck is this white collar that's laced together. In this section, we see a number of things related to music. The largest object is a stringed instrument that's an ancestor to a lute or a guitar. Below that, you see a book, and on its pages are written musical notes. Just to the right of the book are a collection of tubes, and you see on one of them there's a hole drilled into it. This is a bunch of flutes. Just above the music book is a set of dividers, or a compass, and you've used these in schools to draw circles and measure things. These would have been used for the same reason. If you look just below and to the left of the compass, you'll see another book, and if you look inside, you'll see it's filled with mathematics. The wooden object holding the page open is a special ruler that folds open at exactly 90 degrees. This is used a lot like the triangles in our geometry sets. As you look above the book, there's a globe with a handle on it, and when you look closely at this globe, you'll see the continent of Africa, and Europe, and the Middle East. Let's look closely at what he's holding in his hand. It seems to be maybe a telescope, but maybe it's a knife or a dagger. It's obviously well made and expensive, and if you look closely, there's writing on the handle, and that writing says in Latin, he is 29 years old. Now let's move over and look more closely at the book that's underneath this man's elbow. Here's another hidden clue. There's something written here as well that says in Latin, he is 25 years old. Between the two of them is a beautifully made rug. If I were to guess, I would say that this was made in the Middle East. I can only imagine how long it took to paint all those little dots. On the top shelf, we have an assortment of very interesting scientific instruments. The one that's probably most recognizable to us is the globe on the far left, but this is no regular globe. Instead of it being a globe of the Earth, this is a globe of the night sky, and that's because a lot of these instruments have a connection to astronomy. In the center is a sextant, which is used for measuring angles. And to the left of that is an object that I believe shows the way the sun rises and sets each day at different times throughout the year. Below the sextant and slightly to the right is a special sundial. Each face of it works for a different latitude so that a person traveling the world would be able to know the correct time of day no matter where they were. All of these scientific instruments have some connection to travel or time. And here is one of the most surprising things in this painting. That smear on the bottom of the artwork is actually a human skull. This skull is painted in a distorted way that's called anamorphism. You can see it clearly if you look at the painting from right up against it on the right hand side. In fact, some people believe that this painting was originally installed in the ambassador's home. People first approach the painting going down a stairway from the right. People would be able to see the skull clearly at first, and then they would only see the rest of the painting later. And here is a little hidden clue that most people miss. Up in the top left hand corner is this tiny hidden crucifix. Let's start to find meaning in all the things we've seen. And let's begin with the word ambassador. 
An ambassador is an official representative of one country in another. Hans Holbein has painted the two most important representatives of the country of France who are living in England. Any time that someone in the English government needs to talk to somebody about France, these are the people who they speak to. And these two Frenchmen have a number of things in common. I've had a lot of students ask me in the past if these two are brothers, but they're actually not related. They are, however, both young, dressed in expensive clothes, and are looking at us with real confidence. And yet, these are two very different kinds of ambassadors. The one on the left has a bigger presence. Everything about his clothes to the way he's standing makes us think that he really wants to impress us, and he does look really powerful. But it's the dagger in his hand that tells us that he's a political ambassador. He's a person who could advise the French king whether or not France should go to war against England. The power to make either war or peace is literally in his hand. The man on the right, however, has a much quieter and more gentle presence. And for some of you, seeing a man dressed all in black with a white collar like that might look familiar. And that's because the man on the right is a religious ambassador. King Henry VIII has split England away from the Catholic Church. This ambassador from France is trying to convince the people of England to go back to Catholicism. In his hand, he holds a pair of gloves like he's got a lot of work to do. And remember that crucifix hidden in the top left-hand corner? This is Holbein's way of saying that these ambassadors are trying to sneak Catholicism back into England. These two ambassadors paid Holbein a lot of money to tell their story through visual symbolism. The lute, the book of music, and the flutes all show us that they are cultured and musical. The mathematical tools like the compass, ruler, and textbook tell us that they're highly educated with disciplined minds. The globe of the world is there because they're worldly and that they've traveled. That beautiful rug from the Middle East is another way of showing this. These instruments all show that they're up to date with the latest science. These show their interest in astronomy, geometry, and the measurement of time. Put together, these instruments would also be able to help you find your latitude wherever you were in the world. For someone with a scientific mind who likes to travel, these would be essential. And yet, they've gone out of their way to highlight just how young they are. This ambassador really wants us to know that he's only 29 years old. And this ambassador really wants us to know that he's only 25. Which brings us back to the skull. This skull would have been the first thing that people would have seen as they entered the ambassador's residence. And I have to ask, why on earth would they want us to see that first? They have paid a lot of money to have Holbein paint them in a picture that shows them as young, educated, powerful, and wealthy. But why did these ambassadors pay Holbein to make a skull be the first thing that we see. The reason why the skull is there is because this painting is a memento mori, a reminder of death. Nowadays, people in the world live long lifetimes, but for most of human history, people didn't live that long. Sometimes illness or accident or war could strike people randomly, Death was an everyday thing, and people growing up in the past would have known someone young and bright who died before their time. Momento Mori is a reminder that no matter how hard you try, your work, relationships, and dreams may be left unfinished. This idea goes deep into European culture, and even into the days of the Roman Empire. Here's an example. When a Roman general won an especially important victory, they had what was called a Roman triumph. This was a special parade of all the soldiers, the people who they defeated, and the things that they took. At the front of this triumph would be the general and their chariot. And it must have felt to those generals like they were the most important person on the planet. Standing with them in that chariot was a slave who had two jobs. The first was to hold a laurel of olive leaves above the head of the general. But the slave's second job was to whisper into the general's ear, Remember that you too are mortal. 
remember that you too will die. When you put all the clues together, what you see is this. You see two people who are young, wealthy, educated, worldly, and enormously powerful. They're proud of this, and they want people to know it. You can tell they're wealthy by the expensive clothes they wear. You can tell they're educated by all the different books and instruments. You can tell they've traveled because of the rug and the globe. But there is one thing that they want you to know about them first, and that is that they are aware that all this success, all this power, and all this personal improvement can turn to dust in a second. They're aware that all of their successes may disappear due to the randomness of death. The question I want you to think about is, is this a good work of art? Now, I need to be clear that your personal taste is really not important here. What is much more important is whether or not the artwork does its job. And an artwork is good if it communicates clearly. So what you should consider is this. Does this artwork clearly communicate its meaning about these two ambassadors? Remember, this is not really about technical skills, but how well the artist conveys their message. Think about whether you think this is a good artwork, or you think it's bad, or maybe you think it's a bit of both, but be prepared to back up your thinking.